Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, we're going to discuss zero padding as it pertains to convolutional neural networks. What the heck is this mysterious concept? We're about to find out, so let's get to it. We're going to start out by explaining the motivation for zero padding, and then we'll get into the details about what zero padding actually is. We'll then talk about the types of issues we may run into if we don't use zero padding, and then we'll see how we can implement this padding in code using Keras. We're going to be building on some of the ideas we previously discussed in our video on convolutional neural networks, so if you haven't seen that yet, go ahead and check it out, and then come back to watch this video once you've finished up there. All right, so we've seen in our video on CNNs that when a filter convolves a given input, it then gives us an output. This output is a matrix of pixels with the values that were computed during the convolutions that occurred on our image. When this happens, the dimensions of our image are actually reduced. Let's check this out using the same image of a 7 that we used in our previous video on CNNs. So recall on the left we have a matrix of pixel values from an image of a 7 from the MNIST dataset. This image is of size 28 by 28. We'll quickly verify this by highlighting the number of rows, and then looking at the count here, and we indeed see the total number of rows is 28. And then similarly, we will highlight the number of columns here and check that count as well and confirm that it too is 28. All right, then we have this three by three filter that's been initialized with random numbers. Now on the right, we have our output from this filter convolving our input. If we look closely, we can see that the output is actually not the same size as the original input. So let's highlight the number of rows on the output. And we see that the total number of rows is 26. And similarly, if we highlight the number of columns, we can verify by the count that the number of columns is 26 also. So our original input was 28 by 28. And now we have an output that has shrank in size to 26 by 26 after convolving the image. Why is that? With our 28 by 28 image, our 3 by 3 filter can only fit into 26 by 26 possible positions, not all 28 by 28 of them. Given this, we get the resulting 26 by 26 output. This is due to what happens when we convolve the edges of our image. For ease of visualizing this, let's look at a smaller scale example. Here we have an input of size 4x4, then a 3x3 filter. Let's look at how many times we can convolve our input with this filter and what the resulting output size will be. So we have our filter in blue here, and I'm going to illustrate the convolution process by just highlighting the 3x3 three three blocks that our filter would be able to convolve on our input. So we can start the process by placing our filter on top of this first 3x3 three three block here. So we can do that once. And now if we slide our filter to the right by one pixel, we can see that we can do that again. Now at this point, we've reached the edge of our input, so we cannot move to the right any further. So that was two convolutions total that we were able to do. Now we can also move down by one pixel, and we have this three by three block. And we can do that one more time and we have this second block as well. So in total, we went across two times, one, two, and then we moved down once and went two times again. So that means that when this three by three filter finishes convolving this four by four input, it will give us an output of size two by two. Now I've represented that with this red square here that is of size two by two. All right, so we see that the resulting output is two by two while our input was originally four by four. So again, just like in our larger example with the image of a seven, we see that our output is indeed smaller than our input in terms of dimensions. Now we can go ahead and calculate ahead of time by how much our dimensions are going to shrink. In general, if our image is of size n by n and we convolve it with an f by f filter, then the size of the resulting output is this. So it's n minus f plus 1 by n minus f plus 1. Let's see if this holds up with our example here. 
our input size was four by four. So four would be our N here. And our filter was three by three. So three would be our F. Substituting these values in our formula, we have four minus three plus one, which is two. And then the same thing here, also two. So our resulting output is of size two by two, which is exactly what we just saw a moment ago. This holds up for the example with the larger input of the seven as well. So check that out for yourself to confirm that the formula does indeed give you the same result of an output of size 26 by 26 that we saw when we visually inspected it. So looking at the resulting output of the image of a seven again, it really doesn't appear to be that big of a deal that this output is a little smaller than the input, right? Like we didn't lose that much data or anything because most of the important pieces of this input are kind of situated in the middle here. But you can imagine that this would be a big deal if we did have meaningful data around the edges of the image. Additionally, we only convolve this image with one filter. What happens as the original input passes through the network and gets convolved by more filters as it moves deeper and deeper? Well, what's going to happen is that the resulting output is going to continue to become smaller and smaller. This is a problem. If we start out with a relatively small image, for example, then just after a convolutional layer or two, the resulting output may become almost meaningless with how small it gets. Another issue is that we're losing valuable data by throwing away pieces of the information around the edges of the input because the filter is not convolving those edges nearly as much as it's convolving the inner pieces of the input. So what can we do here? Well, this is where zero padding comes into play. Zero padding is a technique that allows us to preserve the original input size. This is something we can specify on a per convolutional layer basis. So with each convolutional layer, just as we define how many filters we want to have and the size of the filters, we can also specify whether or not to use padding. So we now know what issues zero padding combats against, but what actually is it? Zero padding occurs when we add a border of pixels, all with value zero around the edges of our input. This adds kind of a padding of zeros around the outside of the image, hence the name zero padding. Going back to our small example from earlier, if we pad our input with a border of zero valued pixels, let's see what the resulting output size will be after convolving our input there. All right, so we have the same original input here as we had last time. All I've done now is add this border of zeros around our input. We also still have the same three by three filter. So again, if we go through the process that we went through last time, I'm just going to highlight the three by three blocks that our filter would convolve on our image. And we're going to calculate the output size given this process. So if we start here, we're going to highlight the first three by three block. So that's one. We're going to slide to the right by one and do it again. That's two slide to the right again, three slide to the right again, four. So this time we were able to go four across, whereas last time before we added zero padding, we were only able to go twice across. Then we can slide our filter down by one and we'll see that we can do four again. So we've got the first block here, the second, third, and fourth are going to follow suit just as they did one pixel higher. So we've gotten two layers down so far. We can then do that again a third time on this block of these three rows. And we'll do that again, one, two, three, four times. And finally, we can go down one more time. This is going to be our fourth time going down. We're going to be able to do that one, two, three, four times as well. So in total, we were able to go across four times with our three by three filter. And then we were also able to go down four times with our three by three filter. That's going to give us an output shape this time a four by four, and that's going to look like this. So with this, our output size, as we see, is four by four, which is maintaining the original input size. Now, sometimes we may need to add more than a border that's only a single pixel thick around the input. Sometimes we may need to add something like a double border or a triple border of zeros to maintain the original size of the input. This is just going to depend on the size of the input itself and the size of the filters. The good thing is that most neural network APIs figure the size of the border out for you. 
So all you have to do is just specify whether or not you actually want to use padding in your convolutional layers. Now there are two categories of padding. One is referred to by the name valid. This just means no padding. So if you specify valid padding, that means that your convolutional layer is not going to pad the input at all and your input size will not be maintained. The other type of padding is called same. This means that we want to pad the original input before we convolve it so that the output is the same size as the input. So now let's jump over to Keras and see how this is done in code. All right, so here in our Jupyter Notebook, I have a completely arbitrary CNN that I defined here. It has a dense input layer, then three convolutional layers, followed by a dense output layer. Now I've specified that the input size for the data coming into the CNN is 20 by 20. We see that our first convolutional layer has a filter size of 3 by 3, which is specified in Keras with this kernel size parameter. Then the second convolutional layer specifies size 5 by 5, and the third 7 by 7. Now with this model, I'm specifying the parameter here called padding for each convolutional layer. I'm setting this parameter equal to the string valid. Remember from earlier that valid padding means no padding. This is actually the default for convolutional layers in Keras, so if you don't specify this parameter, it's going to default to valid padding. So since we're using valid padding here, we expect the dimension of our output from each of these convolutional layers to decrease. Well, let's check. If we look at a summary of this model, which I've printed out here, we can see the output shape of each layer. The first two integers here specify the dimension of the output in height and width. So starting with our first input layer, we see our output size is the original size of our input, this 20 by 20 here. Then once we get to the output of our first convolutional layer, the dimensions decrease to 18 by 18. And again, at the next layer, it decreases to 14 by 14. And finally, at the last convolutional layer, it decreases to 8 by 8. So we start with 20 by 20 and end up with 8 by 8 when it's all done and over with. And this is completely because of the entire process that we went through in the earlier part of this video. On the contrary now, I've created this second model and it's an exact replica of the first. Except that here I've specified same padding for each convolutional layer. Recall from earlier that same padding means we want to pad the original input before we convolve it so that the output size is the same size as the input size. And by input, I'm meaning input for each individual layer. So let's look at the summary of this model. We can see again that we're starting out with our input size of 20 by 20 just as before. And if we look at the output shape for each of the convolutional layers now, we see that the layers do indeed maintain the original input size all of them now show the output dimensions being 20 by 20. So at this point, I hope you've gained an understanding for what zero padding is, what it achieves when you add it to your CNN, and how you can specify padding in your own network using Keras. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.